How you doing folks? Nothing's ever straightforward when it comes to the restoration of a 1974 Volkswagen Beetle and that definitely applies to the wiper mechanism which unfortunately wasn't in great condition, the one I removed, so uh, I'm going to try and make one good one out of two. <laughs> So I wasn't actually going to make a video about this at all, uh, but when I started getting stuck into it, I realised that this is a, you know, there's more to it than what meets the eye. Uh, there's a, there's one of the spindles on the wiper mechanism, which would explain why it was clunking like mad, and that's all seized up. I knew I was going to need to do something with it sooner rather than later, even when it was on the car. And the motor is slow to turn as well, so I have, that spindle there is alright, but that one there definitely needs uh, need some attention so you can see uh, obviously it's not right now what I have here is another wiper assembly but this is out of a left-hand drive car so it won't fit straight away you can see for example it's completely back to front like the motors on the other side of the uh, on the other side of the assembly and the kink is on the other side all this sort of stuff so uh, obviously I can't use that as it is so what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to take the one or both of the spindles off this and put it onto this and I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take the motor off this as well the reason I'm going to take the motor is because the wiring is all intact as far as the connector that goes onto the wiper uh, motor now uh, I will be cutting that uh, probably around there and just putting some connectors on because I find it incredibly annoying the way Volkswagen didn't include a, a multi-plug connector for the wiper motor under the in the wiper box and you have to go fishing for wires I just don't have the inclination to do that plus I have an inter intermittent wiper um, circuit in my car which doesn't exist in most other cars the first thing I want to do is I want to separate this wiper motor from this frame My garage is a disaster area, it really is, and to be honest with you, it's getting on my nerves. Every time I try and sort it out, I get more stuff to try and deal with. And I'm coming down with crap. Not only crap, but just boxes of parts that need to be fitted to either the Beetle or the MG. And I'm just dealing with a home garage and then the shed, where I have the MG and the camper van at the moment. I didn't want to put the uh, Beetle in the shed because of the fact that it was, uh, it would have just ended up making life difficult logistics wise because most of the parts were here so anyway so there's the two spindles are in much better order and we have the crank for the uh, wiper arm so that's gonna i'm gonna just put that aside and the reason i liberated the motor from that assembly is because this motor is what i'm going to use but what i want to do is i want to crack the back housing off it and i want to lubricate everything inside because i'm i have a funny feeling that's the reason why it's turning slowly so so if you have a look here You'll see there are uh, four screws, so there's one, two, th uh, three, and four there, and there is a nut in the middle, okay? Now, I don't think I need to undo the nut, because I think that just puts a preload on the uh, on the gear. It's basically all it is, is a worm gear and a... Um a drive sprocket. The, the mo this doesn't. Re this motor doesn't reciprocate. It's the mechanism that does the reciprocating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a suitable screwdriver and I'm going to crack off those four screws and get them out of the way. I'm fully expecting to find just gummed up grease inside here that needs to be cleaned out and replaced. Here is what we have inside, so you can see the worm gear coming in there, and that is our drive. Now you'll see the way it has this uh, wheel on it. Now the wheel basically is what uh, is how the wiper mechanism knows where to park. Okay, so you'll see these little fingers here. These contacts run on that uh, on that wheel, and when it gets to a gap in the plastic, which is not immediately obvious, but it will be when we clean everything. That is when. Um, uh, that's when it stops. Quick clean off and now you can see exactly what I mean. So basically that's the position it parks in. So that is the position we're going to put it back into. Well, it, it, to be honest, it doesn't really make a difference because once it parks, you just uh, reposition the crank to the uh, the right place and it will turn off. Um, so uh, yeah, a bit of a bit of faffle about 
but uh, anyway, let's uh, let's get um, let's get that out, and um, we will uh, lubricate every clean and lubricate everything, and uh, clean the contacts there as well, and put it all back together. So straight away, I'm seeing that this is not all that free to turn in the bushing there. So. There's only a little bushing inside there, which acts as a bearing, and there's this grease that feels like earwax for all intents and purposes. So that has to go. And there's like a last contact cleaner I used to clean it out. But let's just try and remove this gasket without breaking it. There we go. So put that over here and scrape out some of that old grease. And we give it all a clean. Okay, so before I start putting anything back together or lubricating anything, what I want to do is I want to spin the motor without the actual uh, gear in place or any load on the motor as such. So what we can actually do is put that on first of all there the black one and touch the red one here on this side motor's not sounding too healthy to tell you the truth so you can see there's two sets of windings the green one is fast and the red one's slow so now what I'm actually going to do is, before I go any further, is I'm going to turn that up and I'm going to, instead of putting grease down there, I'm going to put some light machine oil down there. And if we need to then at that stage, then we can take it, we can set about getting into the motor itself. Motors are not all that complicated in the, in the grand scheme of things. It's generally a worthwhile exercise to try and, you know, try and fix a motor before replacing it. So in this instance, that's exactly what I'm doing. So now what I actually have in this squirty bottle is if you're, if those of, those, of you who have been following me uh, in my progress with the MG may have seen me restoring the uh, damper, lever arm dampers on the front suspension DMG and this is damper oil that's actually in this but the damper oil will do absolutely fine for my purposes here so see that permeate for a little bit See, the thing about it is, if you, if you take out, take off the cover, you're getting into the motor, and then it's not that difficult, but the problem is then is the fact that you're trying to, to get the brushes to go back to where they're supposed to be and all that, and then it can become a bit of a faff at that stage. And I'm certainly not going to replace some brushes in this. What I might end up doing is, if this motor doesn't come good, with a bit of oil, and I do do that, and the, the brushes aren't great. I might have a look at the other motor and see if the brushes are better in that, and then we'll focus our efforts on that motor. So between one, we might have, we might get get one decent one. So um, I'm not going to spray anything because I, I just want to test that first and see how we're looking. So let's see. Um, my bench power supply is actually a golf cart battery charger. <laughs> Does the trick. That doesn't sound too ha too happy at all. I'm not happy enough. I'm not happy with that, folks. I think we're going to have to take it apart. That's all right. That's what we uh, came to investigate. So let's just wipe out some of the oil from here. I think the problem lies deeper inside the motor rather than just with the uh, with the actual bearings at the top end that we can ac access with the oil. So if we actually get in there, we can lubricate things a lot better. So I'm going to just clamp that vice down a little bit more and take these two screws out. All right, so there's two main screws out. So that should allow us to lift this off. Now bear in mind, the, the brushes are gonna be in this end of the motor, okay? So what we'll end up fi finding is the brushes will pop out on us. That's all right, we knew that's gonna happen, okay? So you can see the brushes there. So 
they're looking pretty good. The commutator's not looking too bad either. The commutator is what the brushes actually run on. But what we can do now is we can actually lift out this, which is the the rotor. Well, I think we have to remove it from the other end because I don't know. No, you. Yeah, I see what happens here. You have to remove these two little tabs first of all, which uh, which actually. Let's see. We only have to, yeah, we only have to get one out. Okay, so there is the rotor for the motor. Okay, so if we clean and lubricate the bearings at both ends, clean up the commutator, put it all back together again, we might just be in business, and I think we, I think that will work out all right for us. So, um, first thing to do is to get a little bit of very, very light emery, and to polish up that surface there, which is the commutator, the slip ring. It's not a slip ring because it's a DC motor; it's a commutator, but. Um, we will uh, we will get that polished up and then we can uh, lubricate our bearings. You can see that the oil actually did get down onto that and you did notice that the motor was actually turning a bit better. I'm still not happy enough with it. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's clean that off. Okay, so you can see here now the commutators all cleaned up and we have uh, the um, shaft cleaned up where it goes through the, into the into the bearings as well okay so that's all good okay right and we know that the windings of the motor are absolutely fine so um yeah i mean that's that's as good as you're going to get it so the next thing we need to do is we need to go through each of the between each of the uh segments of the commutator there's a little screwdriver okay and what we're going to do is we're going to just very lightly actually we're going to need something uh stanley blade there uh, Stanley knife. Just going to go through between each one to make sure there's no bits of metal shorting them out. Okay, from when you were uh, see just like that. And all we're doing there is making sure there's no pieces of metal in between them, shorten the uh, shorten the segments out, because that's going to stop your motor from working properly. Okay, so. All right, so that's great. Now, final thing to do is a little spray of contact cleaner and a bit of a wipe and just make sure that that's 100% clean. And then we can uh, we can reinstall it into the housing. Halford's electrical contact cleaner. It's shite, but it's all I've got. So it'll have to do. It's no better than brake cleaner for something like this, to be honest with you, I find. Um, if you want really good uh, electrical contact cleaner, I suggest you invest in um, the Servisol Super 10, I think it's called, or um, Deoxit. Deoxit is brilliant stuff. But uh, for the moment anyway, half weight's electrical contact cleaner will do the job absolutely fine. So now, right, so that's that, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a little smear of grease on the shaft there, and I'm going to drop it down into the motor. And we're going to do the same on the other end. We're going to try it and get those brushes back in. Okay, that'll be that'll be grounded there now. So you have to put a little uh, uh, bracket. Do that back in there. I think we'll probably have to hold that in place. And what I'll do is when I when I have when I have it in, I will um uh, I'll put a little bit of sealant over it then. Right, so that's that. Okay, so next thing to do is we need to uh, we can lubricate the we can lubricate the, this after the uh, motor is back on uh, after the top housing is back on. Actually, no, we can't. You just do this and just a little smear around here. Make sure you don't get it on the commutator. That you just have to clean it up. And just put a little bit on the on that bit there for the moment. We will be doing more of that in a minute, but uh, for the moment, let's worry about the actual motor itself. And hopefully, that comes good for us. Okay, so now we need to take care of this mess here. So I'm going to have a look at it myself and try and figure it out before I come back to you. Okay, so if you look closely, you'll see that I have three pieces of red uh, wire 
looped through the wires that go on to the brushes and that's what's basically holding them back until I get a uh, get it onto the motor wind uh, the the motor uh, rotor looks simple doesn't it I know Jay's no it's not simple at all that was an absolute bloody nu nuisance to try and organize but uh, anyway they're on now so next thing to do is to try and get this onto that wish me luck if I drop it I'll tell you now there will be swearing <laughs> else I will lose my bloody rag Now what I need to do is I need to try and get I need to rotate this first of all so the screw holes are roughly lined up you need to relieve some of the pressure and try and pull the wire out without breaking the wire that goes onto the brush because again if that if I do that as well there will also be swearing Okay, that was a pain in the ass. That was a serious pain in the ass. Right, so now I'm gonna get one of those screws in there because if that comes out, there's going to be swearing again. So let's put that in there. Right, so that's not that's not going anywhere now, right? So. We now have the uh, motor uh, assembled uh, loosely, so I just have another screw to put on on that side there, so we'll do that now. Um, oh yeah, I have to put my little tab in as well, don't I? So, push the tab in and then the screw goes down into it. I'm gonna tighten that all up, that keeps everything together. So, tighten the screws. All right, now, so that's that, okay, so, in theory, that motor should now work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put power to it. So let's turn it around so you guys can see what we're doing. All right, so we'll turn that over there as well. And where's my, the, the crocodile clips my bench supply right here. Oh, and by the way, yes, I did drop one of the springs. It went, I, I don't know, it's great to, uh, one of the great universal truths in um, workshops is that when uh, something hits the floor, it doesn't matter what colour it was when it left your hand, when it hits the floor, it turns into the colour of the floor. <sighs> no. Only one of the two speeds is working. So that means one of the brushes didn't go into position correctly. Yeah. <sighs> Bollocks. Okay, so that was a bit fiddly, but uh, luckily I didn't have to take the brushes back out again because I would have, um, I would have gone mental if I had to, if I had to do that. So what it was was actually the um, uh, one of the brushes was stuck back; it hadn't slid out. So let's let's see how we're looking now. There's high speed. I know they sound pretty similar at the moment, but uh, you would find it would take an awful lot less. Um, y it would slow down a lot more if you had uh, resistance on it. All right, so that's great. I'm happy with that now. So we're um, we're, we're we're finished with the motor side of things. Thanks be to God, because that was a bit of a faff, uh, to tell you the truth. But, um, yeah, simply because of the fact that there was three brushes. The reason there's three brushes is because there's two speeds on the motor, incidentally. Uh, otherwise, there'd only be two. Or um, in a situation like the start motor I had to redo, uh, if you look at my community tab, you'll see I posted a picture of that. I didn't bore people with the details of it. But basically, 
the um, start motor in the Beetle was uh, not working at all. It was turning very slowly. And one of the brush retainers had actually pushed back. It had come out. There's a stupid little retainer kind of clip in them, which, to be honest with you, to me is a bit of a design flaw. But anyway, I was able to relocate it, uh, kind of reshape it a little bit with the pliers and click it back into place. And it seems fine now. So at least with the starting motor in, it's actually installed in the car and everything now. Handy little job to do when the uh, engine isn't in. So anyway, right, back to the wiper motor. So that's that done. Okay, so we're going to put the gearbox back together now and I'm going to grease everything up and hopefully that'll be the job done. Oh, <coughs> you have to do that when you put grease in. A nice splodge of lube. Bit of schlock all over the place there. Now, grand, right, okay, that's that one done. And we shall put this in. Now, your guess is as good as mine of what way it goes. There is a little, there's a little uh, shim there as well, so put the shim back on. And then that goes on next, okay. Now, we will next put our little bit more grease on there, okay. And the grease will then work, work its way around the gear teeth and all around the place so the last thing i want to do before i put this cover on is i want to just clean these three contact fingers here as well because i haven't actually done that yet and once they're clean then uh, i'm going to reinstall the cover with the gasket as well if you remember correctly there is a gasket to go on there too so a little bit of emery and we shall be good to go i reckon my goal with the youtube channel is to get it up to maybe a situation where i'm making Maybe 400, 500 quid a month out of it. I'm nowhere near that at the moment. And if I get that kind of money coming in, I'll be using it to rent a unit and actually have a proper workshop. You so, bring your wife out for dinner. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so now let's reinstall our gasket. I don't want to pack it full of grease. I don't think it necessarily needs it, to tell you the truth. Um, it's it's all in the place it needs to be, down around the shaft and the, on the, uh, the motor and all that. So I think we're probably good on that. So next I'm going to install the cover and we'll see how it operates. I can't test the park feature yet on it. I may have to take this cover off again in the future when it's actually installed in the car if the park just doesn't line up properly. But that's not the end of the world. You can kind of do that in situ on the car, actually. So anyway, there's that. And then that uh, P-clip there will go on, will go underneath one of the screws there. Um, let's get our screws installed. So put the, P, the one under the P-clip, the one on the P-clip first. Okay, so let's let's test it again and make sure it's working. So everything looks right. So I'm going to put the negative on the uh, body of it and the positive. Lovely. So that's one speed. Sounds like a happy little motor, doesn't it? Isn't that nice? So I'm going to actually leave it run for a little while while I give it a clean. Well, does not look the business. Happy with that now. So, uh, yeah, it'll uh, live to fight another day. So, um, in actual fact, this was the uh, this motor was the new motor I got rather than the the one out of. Oh yeah, I turned off the power supply. I was worried for a second. <laughs> I was like, ah oh, no, come on. There we go. 
yeah, ra rather than the one that came out of the car, this is actually the new motor I got. So, um, yeah. That's going to work the job. That's that's brilliant. I bought uh, I bought the, the parts, um, a lot of the parts I need for the... Uh, the the beetle um not everything now but uh enough to kind of get on with now at this stage and uh, i bought them off vwspares.ie a uh, great shop uh, john white owns it and john is uh, fantastic um if you're into volkswagens in ireland he is the one-stop shop for all things volkswagen um he has both new and second-hand parts and this uh, wiper me mechanism for example came from him i mean i knew what i was getting so don't think for a second that he sold me something shoddy I knew that I was. Go uh, I asked him for something like this, so he sent me exactly what I wanted. So I'm happy and uh, brilliant. Okay, that's fantastic. So now that's the wiper motor done. Um, the next thing to do is to look at the, the uh, assembly, uh, the linkage. So uh, I shall do that. Okay, now the dinner has been achieved and one costume change later we can get stuck into the linkage because the motor is now serviceable. I did uh, actually put a little bit of sealant on those two tabs on either side that I mentioned as well, so that's actually done as well. So yeah, here is the linkage. Now it's looking very dusty, sorry for itself, and generally in poor condition. And we can't have that because this car does not look like that and won't when I'm finished anyway. So first of all, Let's get that. Uh, let's get that uh, spindle out of there, and we'll replace it. And also, you can see where the you can see the amount of play in that rod. So we're going to need to address that as well. So hopefully the rod will uh, do the trick from the other motor as well, from the other assembly as well, and we'll be able to kind of like what I'll do is I'll leave the rod on this and break it up there. But um, the remains of the motor is still attached in inside there, so I need to take off that plastic cover. You don't need to, but it's an awful lot easier if you do. Um, I kind of gutted the motor because, well, let's just say one of the springs went flying across the across my garage from the brushes, and it was never to be seen again. So I kind of had to rob a few parts from it. But at least we have one serviceable motor from the two, and that's all I was looking to do. Okay, so the plastic cover is literally just held in with two screws. One here. And there's another one over here. Alright, so that plastic cover will get cleaned up and maybe give it a lick of paint as well. But for the moment, I'm going to just take off the, the remains of the motor. As I said, I'll just show you here what I'm doing. So what I literally have to do is just uh, undo that nut, take out those three bolts, and then that allows me to take that off and then we can actually fit the new motor at the back. But uh, we do... Well, it might actually be handy to do that now because the thing about it is, is the fact that at least that way it is in the uh, correct, uh, well, it, it's something to hold on to it with, so I'll show you what I mean now in a minute. I was being pestered by my next door neighbour who wanted to borrow my 3.8 drive tank socket set. The man's a pest and I eventually capitulated and lent it to him and he said he'll have it back to me tomorrow, but the problem is I still actually wanted other stuff to do tonight. And the only reason I didn't tell him to F off was because of the fact that A, I think I'm too nice at times, and B, he cuts our front grass, and sometimes though, I do wonder is it really worth it or will I just cut my own grass? It's a pain in the ass is what he is. So anyway, I don't know where the hell my quarter drive tank socket set is. Buried in the detritus of my garage, which is just annoying me even more. So now I'm using the leftover sockets and stuff like that that I have. The gas thing about it is, is not only did he borrow my 10 3 8 drive socket set, he also borrowed my 2 ton trolley jack, which in itself weighs 2 tons. And I, <laughs> I told him, you're not going to be able to lift that into the back of your car. But he wouldn't be told, so he wants to do his own back end and leave him out. Anyway. Right, okay, so that's the, the motor off this. Uh, next thing to do is, there is a kind of a double stacked kind of ball joint assembly type thing on this here, and I'm gonna show you that now. And basically what we need to do is we need to separate those ball joints off it. 
All right, so obviously here's where the motor goes on. That is the arm in question that we want to change. Of course it is. It wouldn't be this one here, I'm sure that would be too easy. Uh, so we need to get this off first of all, and then pull this uh, pull this off then afterwards. So um, yeah, and then once we have that off, then we can kind of worry about this here. But um, yeah, exactly how you get that out, I'm not 100% sure yet, but we'll figure it out. Uh, it can't be that complicated. So first things first, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to catch the the motor drive crank in device rather than the actual um, Stevis back plate, whatever support frame thing. Uh, I'm going to catch that in device instead. So yeah, we will um, we'll be able to at least pry on it a little bit. So let's uh, let's do that. Also, uh, I need to. I'm just too lazy to go and get my tripod, but I think you can see what I'm doing. So at least now we know that's not going to go anywhere. So I have a ball joint splitter here. I think it's probably a bit big and ignorant for the job, but it's almost absolutely perfect. <laughs> well, I thought that was a hell of a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, to tell you the truth. So, okay, so that's the motor crank liberated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to inspect that and make sure that the actual balls on it are in serviceable condition. And I'm not completely worn down. They're not, which is good. All right. So that's the motor crank. Okay, so what I think is going on here is that the, the center of the spindle needs to be knocked through in order to allow that uh, part of it to come out. So at least that's what I think anyway. So I'm going to catch the device and have a look and see if I can belt it with a hammer. Okay, I think I figured it out. There is a very very small circlip up at the top of this um, uh, shaft here I can't go at that because the problem is although yes I will get this out I won't get the new one in and that's uh, well you know if I if I if I have at the new one in the same way as I'm having at this it's, it's not gonna work out well so that's uh, Tiny, tiny little circlip, as I said. So, I'm going to keep that, because it came out intact. Now I'm hoping that that will tap out. Yes, this. So that's part one of two we want to remove. Okay, so that's that out of the way. So now let's get this nut off all the way. And there's a washer, and then this comes off. Okay, right, so now we're in business. So now that's our old uh, wiper spindle assembly which is pretty gummed up, it has to be said. And we have a new one to put in. So let's get everything cleaned up first of all. Okay, I'm just thinking, if that side was that bad, why wouldn't I take the other side apart and give it a little clean and grease as well? Because all that's gonna end up happening is three, day, three years down the line, the other one is gonna fail. And then I'm gonna be left with no wipers again. So I don't wanna have to do this job twice. So for the sake of pulling out a circle clip and knocking out the uh, thingamajig. See that one came out easily enough. Okay, so that can go there. There's a washer as well. I'll just give that a few taps first. It comes up a lot easier. Drop the washer. All right, so straight away we can see that, that that, although lubricated, is dirty, and that just won't do. So, wipe it off.
clean out the inside of this. A little bit of this chain clean stuff, which I find is great stuff altogether for this kind of thing. And a few drops of oil, first of all. The oil is really just to flush out the chain clean. And then we're going to slather a bit of grease onto that there. Okay, so there we go. That's greased up. Pop that back on. And it's absolutely sublime, folks. So we put our washer back on. Sear clip goes over that. Definitely a worthwhile exercise. It took what? Two minutes. Oh, that's beautiful now. That's that's working really nicely. Okay. So basically now we know how to remove the wiper spindle from the other side, but look at that's fantastic. That's gonna work really, really nice now. Okay, so here is the spindle that has been liberated from the uh, other wiper mechanism that I got uh, to disassemble, the left-hand drive one. And you can see I just cleaned it up on the wire wheel, as has been evidenced by the noise in the background. And there goes the nozzle off the chain clean. So. Lovely. Okay. So there we go, that's a, that's a one sharden. And this is the, uh, the spindle itself. So it was really enough just to wipe the, wipe the other one over. But it's amazing the jobs that take you so long. I'm just thinking to myself like, this is a video of its own. It's a job of its own, resurrecting the wiper mechanism for this beetle and I have the whole car to put together what other delights am I going to find in store for me as I go along okay so I'm going to gently catch this in device here at this point okay and then drop our whole assembly on here. Now you see there's um there's a notch in the actual in the lower uh, the lower ring kind of thing and that lines up with a, a little um retainer kind of uh spud let's just call it on the actual um on the frame so just tighten that up Beautiful. Okay, folks. Right, so that there is the installed um, outer part of the spindle. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to very gently actually put it in this way. All right. Now put that like that. And this here needs to be installed, but first a bit of oil down there. And then we're going to put some grease on the spindle. That. That'll just go down like that. That works beautifully. Okay. That's top of the range, folks. Absolutely top of the range. So now, take this out, flip it over. Catch it by the arm here, and my rubber glove, of course. And we will take a washer, pop the washer down first, and a circlip. Oh, 
All right. So now we have a functioning pair of wiper spindles, both of which feel pretty much the same, which is fantastic. So the next thing to do now is to install the motor. Um, but I'm going to just do a little bit more cleaning first. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch the motor in the vise, like this, which is grand. And this will then go like this. Just grand. Three bolts holding it in. Which I think you will find is also grand. I'm not doing a concourse restoration, folks, so, you know, I mean, as far as going painting things and everything is concerned, that's overkill in my mind. But it is clean and it's serviceable. And not in this, in this context, that's what I'm looking for. All right. Pass that on. So now we need to install our spindles. So around here and see see what we've got so far. So we've got that's working beautifully. There's the motor, all working beautifully. And this spindle here, which I am actually glad I took apart and lubricated because it's working beautifully as well. So now what we need to do is we need to install our crank. Now, as I said, I probably expect that I'm going to have to take this back off again to relocate it in a different orientation. But for the moment, let's just put it on there. And we have our nut. So tighten that up there. And I'll do that up and we'll get our rod sorted out. Okay, so we're going to put long rod on first here. Um, tight, we'll click it down in a minute. Okay, maybe it goes around the other way. There we go. Goes on there, and then that will go on in a minute. Thinking that's actually not supposed to be bent in like that, but we'll figure that out in a minute as well. And we will put short rod on. Going from here, over to here. And just of course as I was finishing, the battery on my camera died. But uh, luckily enough I have my phone in my pocket so I'm able to finish the last scene on that. But basically yeah, they're clicked on, just a little squeeze of a pliers was enough to get them on and job is a good one. I'm delighted with that. So that's speed number one in, in reverse actually I just noticed but but that's actually the slow speed. Fantastic. I'm delighted with that, folks. Anyway, I haven't forgotten about putting the plastic cover back on, by the way. I know I need to do that still, but it needs a clean, first of all. And I might give that a lick of paint because it's looking pretty scabby. And um, it's one of the quite visible parts of the wiper mechanism. So we may as well. But uh, yeah, let's le let's uh, leave it there, folks. I think we've done enough and um, I'm delighted with the end result. Last thing that I need to do here is to give this bloody workshop a bit of a tidy. So thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will chat to you in a future video. Talk to you soon. Oh, bloody hell, I really overdid it with the amount of footage I shot for this video. It's going to take hours of editing. The life of a YouTuber, folks.